Um, next, we're going to talk about monetization and KPIs in Real Money Gaming and, and Social Casino. And we've got two guys uh, who are qualified to talk about that, Matt Cohen and Mike Reeves. Uh, they're, they're not working together, but they're friends, and they uh, share knowledge in two di very different spaces. And it should be interesting to hear their, their perspective, their joint perspectives. Um, Matt uh, comes to us from uh, originally from Betfair uh, in the U.S., and, re and currently is the president of Rocket Play. You may know their game uh, Lucky Play Casino and Sportsbook and Paradise Slots 777 on Facebook, doing very well. Um, and Mike, uh, very interesting background in the, uh, on the real money side, uh, VP of engineering at LookSmart, which was acquired by Checkpoint, um, and then worked at Lawrence Livermore Labs building atomic bombs or something like that. <laughs> uh, did you do ga gambling at Lawrence Livermore Labs? Monte Carlo simulations. Okay, that exploded. <laughs> okay, and then um, he was the senior vice president of development at Cyber Arts, uh, which sold to Fertitta and now is Ultimate Poker, which is uh, the uh, first real money poker game uh, out of Nevada. So that's really great. He also uh, can be found frequently at the Oaks Card Room in Emeryville if anyone needs to pick up a game. And he'll tell you more about that after as well. So uh, let's talk about uh, KPIs. Great. Thanks, George. Um, we're going to do uh, a little bit of a compare and contrast, not just around uh, KPIs, but we thought we'd, we'd sprinkle in some monetization as well, the differences between social and, and real money monetization as well as retention and uh, customer acquisition, which obviously is, is hugely important. So I um, thought we'd just give a couple quick, a uh, little bit more flavor around intros. Um, as George mentioned, um, I'm the president of Rocket Play. We're, uh, Actually, a UK company, but our uh, our business is operated out of San Francisco, and all of our development sits over in Israel, in Tel Aviv. Um, we have three games: one on Facebook, two on on mobile platforms, and uh, we're very focused on uh, being a an, an R, a social casino and sportsbook operator on those platforms. Um, as George mentioned prior to that, I worked for Betfair. Um, I was vice president of New Ventures. I was looking at uh, everything in the U.S. market that Betfair, as the world's largest betting exchange out of the U.K., could legally do in the U.S., which included horse racing, fantasy sports, online poker, if and when that ever went, uh, both federally and state by state, um, as well as uh, online casino games and sports betting. Uh, thanks for all for coming today. I'm Mike Reeves. Um, and uh, I'm the founder, uh, co-founder of a company called CashBet, founded it about seven months ago or so. We are a platform, uh, an SDK provider, and a turnkey operator for uh, real money gaming solutions for social and mobile game developers. Uh, my background, uh, about for the last five years or so, has been in real money gaming, both with uh, cyber arts, where I led uh, product development and engineering, and with a company called US Digital Gaming, um, for about the last year and a half or so. Um, left them uh, late last year. Uh, I probably met Matt, we pitched, I know Betfair, uh, we pitched poker to them uh, as CyberArts uh, a few years ago. And, and as George mentioned, uh, CyberArts uh, was sold to Fertitta Interactive and now powers Ultimate Poker, which is the first real money online legal poker in the US since the UIGEA. I spent uh, several war uh, years uh, along with the uh, the colleagues at uh, CashBet uh, that have come with me from that company uh, spent several years working on that platform. I've got about 20 years experience in IT. Um, as, as George mentioned, uh, I've got a PhD in physics. Um, and uh, I've rolled out real money gaming solutions throughout Europe, including in Italy, in France, and, uh, and throughout Eastern Europe. Done some work for uh, several US lotteries as well. How many people are familiar with the state of real money gambling in the US? So fair bit, okay. For, for those that, that aren't um, online uh, gambling, whether it be casino or, or poker games is legal right now in three states. Uh, only one is in operation today, that's Nevada for poker, um, as, uh, as Mike mentioned. Um, the next one's coming online are New Jersey around Thanksgiving and uh, the state of Delaware, probably in the end of September timeframe. So um, we thought we'd start by taking a look at the, um, the differences between social players and real money, um, real money uh, gaming players, and the, the number of players that exist 
on a monthly basis throughout the world. And the, and the differences are pretty staggering, um, as one might imagine. Um, the social casino audience on a monthly basis is roughly around 800 to a billion players a month. Um, not, not specifically social casino, but um, social games um, across um, social platforms and, and mobile devices. And then the um, online gambling worldwide uh, player market on a monthly basis is anywhere from, from 40 to 60 million players. So a huge disparity there. So we want to start out by talking about the acquisition costs of uh, social money versus real money gambling. There's some similarities, there's some differences. Social gaming, on average, uh, you're seeing about a $1 to $7 uh, acquisition cost. It's rising. Um, the, uh, uh, the mobile market in particular is, uh, is inefficient. Um, it's immature. And so uh, these costs are going to be, I think, quite variable. Um, for, uh, for real money gambling, uh, we've got about a $250 to $400 acquisition cost. And that's for a depositing player. Uh, that's, what we, uh, that's what we pay for in, in real money gambling. Um, that market is fairly mature. It's dominated by uh, a couple of large affiliate networks. Net Refer and Income Access are the biggest ones out there. Uh, contrast that um, with, uh, you know, I, I, don't, I don't think any, uh, uh, any big, large, mature uh, mobile uh, 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 affiliate networks exist right now on the social side. Uh, SEM, where it's a, a channel for, uh, 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 for social, is, uh, is only a channel for real money gambling in markets where it's regulated. Google doesn't allow any advertising of real money gambling outside of regulated markets such as the UK. Um, and you know, cash, at CashBet, we feel like there's an opportunity here for some disruption to uh, the traditional online uh, real money gambling acquisition methodologies. There are companies like Leo Vegas who've been around for a year or so and are currently raking in about a million euros a week in player deposits. And so uh, uh, we feel this is an area of, uh, of growth and opportunity. Lifetime value is obviously uh, important, whether it's real money gaming or, or social casino gaming. Um, you can see, based on some of the numbers that, that we pulled, that there's a, a massive difference in the amount of what a player would be worth for a social casino game or a social game, uh, anywhere from, from 2 to $5, whereas that number for uh, a gambling player, someone that deposits and plays, is roughly probably more in the $900 to $1,000 range. Um, so um, a, again, a very, very big difference in the two players. So revenue-wise, uh, in 2012, the entire worldwide online gambling market was about a $36 billion market. And we want to contrast that with uh, the overall social mobile game uh, market, which is about $6 billion last year. So you've got a 6x uh, difference and market size for, uh, uh, for what is it, a, uh, a 20, 20 times fewer players. And the, the real reason here is because there's no, there's no freemium model, there's no free to play in real money gambling. If you want to play, you've got to pay. So now, now we'll drill down to um, the, the monetization areas of, of both um, social casino as well as real money gaming. Um, and then take a look at the KPIs as well. Um, and on the monetization side, as, as many of you well know, I'm assuming that a lot of us here are, are social casino operators or looking to get into this space and it perhaps have operated other social games, so we have a pretty good sense of, of what the, uh, the monetization drivers are already um, and the KPIs are already, but for the purposes of everyone else, we'll, we'll revisit those. So um, typically for uh, a social casino game, obviously the bulk of your revenue is going to come from in-app purchases. For a casino game, it's going to be currency to play the game, continue the game if you lost everything, or chips, depending on whatever that, that currency is within the game. Virtual goods are, are popular as well and, and certainly a driver for monetization, depending on the game. Um, we currently in our games don't offer any virtual goods, at least not yet. Um, we probably will at some point, but we just haven't prioritized it. Um, return to player, really, it's not necessarily a, a form of monetization, but it's, it's, it's an opportunity to really set that pinch within the game. Um, it's that delicate balance of being able to set the economy in such a way 
so that you can get players to play the game, engage, the ga engage in the game, continue to retain that player to come back and keep playing, and then ultimately get them to a point where you can get them to pull out their wallet and spend some money with you. Um, and it's a very, very delicate balance, as I, as I mentioned. And then there's, there's other stuff like ads and sponsorships, incentivized ads, non-incentivized ad, incentivized ads, depending on the platform, which can, um, which can also drive your revenue significantly. So looking at, uh, at the way monetization occurs in real money gambling, it's, it's significantly different. There's, there's essentially two ways that money is made in real money gambling. It's either through rake or through house edge. And I'm going to talk about both of those in a minute. Um, but real money gamers, uh, traditional online real money gamblers, are not, they're not buying virtual goods. They're not doing in-app purchases. They're there to go ahead and, 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 make, and make money or try to make money or experience the thrill of gambling. Or, uh, or, or lose and get some entertainment for a while while, the, while they're there. Um, that we feel is changing a little bit uh, uh, with, the, uh, uh, you know, with some convergence in, uh, between social and mobile with, with, with some, and, and real money gambling, which some companies are doing. Uh, there, uh, you know, there exists the opportunity that you know, perhaps there's a, a different class of player that's actually uh, being converted over to a, a real money gambler. And um, we're hoping to take advantage of that at cash bet. Um, Rake is, uh, is, mainly, uh, is mainly used in poker. Um, typical rakes in an online poker room are set at about 10% or so. Uh, rake is also used in, in bingo, parimutuel games. Um, to some extent, it's, you know, it may be used in other games like sports betting. And that's where the, the house takes a fixed amount out of each pot. And that's, that's how they make their money. Um, the, the other way that, uh, that money's made is through, uh, is through the math model. And for those of you who are experienced in, in, uh, in building casino games or slot games, you know that there's a math model that drives these games, and, and in a lot of cases that really, um, that really drives the interest, the player interest in the game. It's not just the graphics and, and the other components of the game, but how that, how that math is, whether it's volatile or, or, or not, and uh, you know, whether there are large, large payouts or a bunch of small payouts or things like that, really drives the playability of the game. All of those math models um, contain a house edge. So we talk about return to player in the online gaming world as um, typically, it's, it's different than in the social space. It's, it's typically uh, something that's, that's regulated, either jurisdictionally or through, uh, or through companies that, um, that deal in responsible gambling, like eCogra, organizations like GamCare, uh, that, that set an RTP value that uh, you typically need to adhere to, or maybe set jurisdictionally. And those might be 85, 90%, something like that. It depends on the jurisdiction. It depends on where you are. The house edge is one minus that. So if you've got an 85% return to player, your house edge is 15%. And from that, you can calculate things like what's our theoretical win going to be. That's you know, depending upon how many chips are purchased and what the house edge is. We can determine that. We can determine the actual win. Um, uh, th there's a number of other terms that are, uh, that are associated here in, in, real, money, uh, in real money gaming. Um, but I think. Uh, you know, for the, for the most part, in the, in the single player, what we call fixed odds games that, you know, probably many of you in this room are dealing with, uh, the RTP uh, or house edge is the, uh, is the driver of, uh, of monetization. As it relates to the, the KPIs in, in, in social casino and, and social gaming, I'm preaching to the choir, I would imagine, given in that most of you are, are here for a reason because you're probably operating a business in this space already. Um, these, are, these are some of the, the typical KPIs that I'm sure a lot of you are very familiar with. Um, this is, I, I basically took what, what we look at um, every day on our dashboard um, at Rocket Play across all of our games. Um, and these are, these are all the data points um, from our games that we follow on a, on a daily basis, also on a weekly basis and on a monthly basis. Um, one, of the, one of the biggest drivers for the business, obviously, is going to be how much you have to, have to pay out of pocket to acquire those customers, and then, and then ultimately, how, can you, how soon can you make that money back as, as time goes on and those players come back to the game and, and deposit and continue to play. So CPI is a very important, very important KPI that, that we follow. Um, DAU and MAU is something that's thrown around very loosely every day in terms of how big your audience is on a daily or a monthly basis. Um, another key driver um, that, that many, uh, most everyone follows is retention. How well does your game retain players? How often do they come back? 
Um, are they coming back every day? Can you get them, get them to come back every day or every week? And then um, the revenue, or, uh, and then engagement. Are you keeping those players in your game for an extended period of time? Are they engaged by the content that you're offering them, or are they not? Um, average uh, ARP DAO is another one in terms of the, uh, the amount of revenue that you're making uh, based on the, the, the daily active players that you have, um, either on a daily basis. Uh, you can look, look at that also on a monthly basis. Um, and then RTP is also something that we, fo we follow very closely, um, looking at the volatility of our games, um, particularly in our slots games, um, and adjusting that volatility um, really based on, based on the player and the machine that we're offering the different players that come to our game. And then lifetime value. Ultimately, the players that we get in our game, what are they, what are they gonna ultimately be worth? How quickly can we make, that, make back that money? And hopefully um, something on top of that for what we spent to acquire that player. So the KPIs of the real money gaming space are, are similar, but there are some subtle differences. Um, in the cost per acquisition, uh, Matt talked about the cost per install. And uh, what we look for in real money gambling is the cost uh, to acquire a depositing player. That's, uh, that's where you make your bread and butter. It's, uh, you know, there are free play games out there that uh, people use to go ahead and entice folks in. I'm sure you know, a lot of you have, have seen uh, you know, the free play version of Poker Stars. And, you know, if you come from international places, maybe you've even played. Um, but uh, these companies spend a lot of money in acquiring a player who will make a first deposit. And oftentimes they're going to give a first deposit bonus uh, or other incentives to go ahead and become a depositing player. Um, the, uh, the second thing that uh, a real money uh, a gaming site is going to look for is, is increase in that number of wagers per hour. And there are, there are a number of different ways to do this. Um, if any of you follow online poker, you probably know about uh, Rush Poker or Zoom Poker. These are both uh, variants of what we call in the industry fast fold poker. So it's an interesting concept. You, uh, you're dealt a hand. And if you don't like it, you discard it, and you're immediately reseated at a new table with a new poker hand. So you end up playing about uh, three times as many hands as you would uh, uh, playing at a, a traditional poker table. And what the industry uh, is reporting is that something like 55 to 60% of revenues are coming from fast fold variants of poker these days. They're very popular, and uh, they make a lot of money for the operators. Link to play is an important consideration. Uh, the engagement, uh, uh, similar to uh, the social world, um, we want to keep people, uh, people in their seats and, uh, and gambling for as long as, uh, as we can um, with, uh, with the consideration, therefore, uh, responsible gambling. This is something we have to adhere to within the industry. Uh, you know, if people have been at a, at a gambling site for a particular amount of time, there are uh, responsible uh, gaming uh, rules that we have to adhere to. We have to show a clock on the, on, the, uh, on the game table, and we have to remind people after they've been there for so long that, hey, you've been gambling for an hour. Why don't you take a break for a while? We also have uh, uh, methods within, uh, within the system. You know, for example, in the cash bet system, we have a method to allow players to opt out for a certain amount of time, uh, be it a day or a week or a month, or to opt out uh, entirely. Um, the average bet size is, uh, is something that we keep an eye on. So obviously, you want your, your premium players to be well taken care of. And uh, you want to do what you can to go ahead and increase that. And then you know, overall, you're looking at uh, LTV just as you are in the social world, lifetime value of the player. Typically, this is going to be measured over a period of 18 months or so. Um, uh, although in some online gambling uh, uh, operations, there, there's not a lot of loyalty. I think poker is one that's been very commoditized over the last few years with rake back bonuses and things like that. A lot of players will typically chase these bonuses around and there's not a lot of, a lot of brand loyalty. So that's it. That's all we've got. Uh, any questions from the audience? For, for which? For both? For, for either. I mean, uh, you know, it, it, all the other ones are sort of straightforward kind of goals. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 way that, the way that we do it is really based on uh, whatever we had to pay out 
in order to, um, to acquire that customer, as I mentioned. Um, so we actually look at it in, in, in co what are called co cohorts, um, daily cohorts or weekly cohorts of uh, individuals that we brought into the game that day or that week. And then we look, at, we look at that extended period of time, 30, 60, 90 days out, and how, how soon we can make back the investment that we made, and ultimately, what are those players worth to us? And hopefully, there's a premium on whatever that investment was. I don't know if you. No, not really. I think it's something that you, um, it's, uh, it is a, it's, it's an indicator of performance. It's not necessarily a tuning parameter. In other words, um, you know, there are a lot of industry measurements out there. J.P. Morgan put some numbers out a couple weeks ago that said the average uh, lifetime value for an online gambler was like 780 bucks. But I've heard, you know, $1,600, $1,800 thrown around. And what you really need to do is understand <coughs> what your monthly average revenue is per user and try to extrapolate over how long a lifetime that, that user may have. And as I said, the you know, industry, industry average you use about 18 months or so is how I model out the uh, uh, the, uh, the length of uh, uh, lifespan of a customer. Um, but it can vary. You know, uh, I think on, uh, on poker sites, it, it's, it, it varies uh, dramatically. And as I said, uh, you know, I, I don't think there's a lot of brand loyalty. So, um, you know, it's, 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 more, uh, it's, more some, it's more an indicator of performance that you, need to take, uh, that you need to keep an eye on rather than something that you can necessarily tune because it's, you know, it's, it's lagging so far. I mean, you really have to look at it over a long period of time. It's also hugely dependent on the channels that you're using to acquire the customers. Some, some are great and some are awful. Mr. Volk? Yeah, when you say to, uh, to a game uh, like a slot game or a video poker, what are, you know, on real money, what, what are the key decisions that you care about? What do you think you make decisions for a game A versus game B? What drives you? Want me to try this one? For real money? Yeah, real money. So uh, my, my opinion is it's, uh, it's two things. It's, um, it's the graphics and it's the math model. And I think that uh, other than that, you've got you know, sort of tertiary uh, features such as what type of bonus am I getting? You know, if poker, I'm worried about a rake back bonus. Uh, if I'm a depositing player, I'm gonna be looking for uh, a sign on bonus, exactly. If I wanna play on mobile, then I wanna have a game that's designed specifically for a mobile device and not something that's been you know, clunkily ported over to, uh, to something else. Um, you know, you know, when I look at a, a slot game, for example, you want to see, you want to see things like, uh, uh, you know, you'd, you'd like there to be an accumulator, you'd like there to be scattered pays, you'd like there to be, uh, you know, a number of features that are fairly standard these days, but, you know, have really, you know, come to fruition in the online world over the last, you know, 10 years or so, I'd say. So, I think you're looking for features, I think you're looking for math, I think you're looking for something that's fun, that's compelling, that, uh, that'll keep your interest. Um, a lot of times people are looking for uh, specific brands, I mean, I'm not going to play Kitty Glitter, but I know there's a, it's got a strong following in some places. Um, so you want to add to that, Matt? No, I mean, I think, I think you, you, you hit it. I, I think a lot, it's largely dependent on the player themselves and the type of content that they want to interact with. And then again, like you said, the, the volatility of the game. In the back over there? For social or real money? Social. Yes, we, we do. We put it out and, and we, we test it. We, we put it out based on the, the, the art, the content around the game, uh, per, certain positions within the, the larger game that we have. Um, we reorder things um, and then we do tweak the math model. In uh, the real money side, um, it's, uh, you know, maybe a little bit different. I, I, I don't know. There are. Uh, we, we, we have mathematicians, gaming mathematicians, that you know, specifically um, work in this industry to go ahead and provide math models which are volatile or non-volatile. We come up with a par sheet, uh, uh, which stands for payouts and reels. We go through an, an, a fairly extended analysis, which has to be submitted to the jurisdiction. Uh, and you know, uh, some math models are successful, some aren't. And as to why they are, I think uh, you, know, it really, you really have to get them out there and test them. I I think that's all the time we have. They're telling us that we have to go. Uh, I'm, Matt and I will be, uh, you know, probably the back of the room or right outside in case anybody wants to talk to us afterwards. Thanks a lot, everybody. Thanks.